Hey, Com 101 people. So we have finished uh, tutorials for the Microsoft Office phase, uh, the first half of this class, and the rest is going to be the Adobe Creative Cloud. So hopefully you've got uh, the programs you need downloaded. Your edition might be newer, might be different if you're on a PC instead of a Mac. Um, I'm using an older Mac version, but they're really all the same. They're all going to have the same basic tools except you might have some more if you have a newer version. So on the left, you have your, before we import anything, this is basically what the layout's going to look like. Uh, you've got your select button. This is your um, marquee tool if you want to um, highlight and select uh, an item. This is uh, a lasso tool, and you can right-click, and you can look at different options here, different ways of selecting parts of an image that you can then duplicate or add. This is the crop tool. Um, dropper tool, paintbrush, we probably won't be using all of these, a fill tool, if you've used Microsoft Paint, you know, you're familiar with the basics, then these are for text, and then there's going to be ways to alter your text. Um, okay, we'll go back into that later. Um, anyway, so, uh, if you go to File, Open, or Import, um, you can find uh, some kind of a picture or an image that you're going to use for this to alter can be some one of your own. Uh, I'm going to use this forest illustration um, that I've been using because I've been making this mural. So you can command plus to zoom in and minus, um, which is pretty similar to a lot of Adobe programs. It's going to be the same thing for when we use the timeline in uh, Edition or Premiere. And so this is your image. Um, if you go into image options, you can change this in image size, and it'll tell you the dimensions. So when you look up any image like on Google, uh, it'll tell you, uh, if you select on the image, it'll say the pixel dimensions. It'll say, you know, 1500 by 1060 or whatever uh, in pixels. And it also shows you that equal size of the document in inches. You can change this, uh, but one thing, if you want the highest resolution possible, let's say that you're making a graphic, um, you know, for promotional reasons or whatever, you can set this resolution at 300 DPI, and you'll see that'll increase the pixel sizes, which mean the pixel size, which means it'll increase the overall resolution. Uh, a lot of times, if you submit, um, you know, images uh, anywhere, they'll say make sure the resolution is 300 DPI, depth uh, pixels per inch, to make it as high quality as possible. So press OK, and now as you can see, it made the overall image a lot bigger, um, and made this image high as maximum quality as it can be. Um, so, uh, some ways to use these tools. Uh, let's say that I wanted to just take out, you know, the rabbit. I could zoom in, again, with Command Plus, um, and select it using this lasso tool if I wanted to go into... Th these are different ways. Magnetic, it's going to find the edges. Magnetically, lasso lets you draw how you want. This is going to choose the rough uh, shape. Um, I like this freeform tool, the lasso tool. And so you just click and basically draw around this bunny, you know, I'm doing a little sloppily because I'll be able to iron out these edges later. And then once it's, it has this, um, this little slow dash animation, that means it's, you've made a complete loop and you go to edit copy. And now I can deselect that because I've copied that rabbit. And if I press new and go to a new image, it's automatically going to remember the size of that image that I, um, of the rabbit that I just lassoed. So if I press OK and then press Edit Paste, it pastes in exactly the size of uh, that rabbit. Now the background image, it looks like this checkerboard, that just means that it's transparent. There is no background image. All it has right now is the bunny. So if I wanted, if you wanted to make a logo, that's how you'd make a logo, um, which is just, you know, the transparent decal. So if I wanted to make a bunny logo, I could. I could take this eraser. Um, you go into eraser mode, it's going to look pretty similar to when you go into the paintbrush mode as well. It's going to show you, you know, the size, the softness of the edge. So I want a soft edge, you know, maybe something a little bit bigger, but keep it pretty small to get right up to the, uh, the outline of that bunny. Uh, the opacity, if you wanted to change that uh, to make it, you know, a little bit see-through. So I could zoom in and I'll start to erase the edge. Uh, of this blue just to have the bunny that I want selected. Um, so just, uh, yeah, just gonna do that. 
There's always edit undo in case you make a mistake. So here I'm just sort of trying to get this nice little outline of the bunny to make it look a little bit cleaner. These edges look a little bit softer. There you go. So if I wanted to turn this into a logo, then I could go into, say, the text mode. Over here, it shows your colors, foreground and background. Uh, so take this to black. And with text, you can just start writing on screen. I don't know why it's saying that it can't find my fonts to use. But let's just, OK, well, let's just ignore that. Usually, it would say that you have a font option, and you would click, and you'd type. Uh, I don't know what's up with this version. I've got like three versions of Photoshop on my computer, but I'm just going to ignore that. Uh, let's find some other options. So let's say instead of using the text that I wanted to uh, put this bunny on a different background. So I could press open and take at, take, uh, ooh, that's a pretty crazy one from a presentation I was giving. So now I could go back to this bunny, press the select, uh, or my, yeah, yep, press, uh, let's do this to select him. Edit copy, go into here, edit, paste, yep, and it imported just that bunny. So a great way to make, you know, a logo, uh, if you want just an, an image selected, now I've got that bunny. Now, there are a billion things I could do, you know, with him, I could, if I wanted to make more bunnies, I could go to and select, yes, um, take that bunny, edit, paste, sure, make more bunnies. You, know, you can drag and literally move it like this. Just drag it over to get the reverse image. Resize by pressing these boundaries, and then when you want it where you where uh, where you where you have it where you want it, you press this check mark, and now it's going to be fixed in there. Um, so let's make one more, and then I'll go into the layers. And here's one more little bunny. So now I've got three bunnies, you know, added in this background image. Um, you see over here to the right, yes. You've got um, your background layer and then your other layers. So if I select these, go into select option, it'll show you which part belongs to which layer. Um, so you've got your background image, then this first rabbit I imported is my first layer, my second layer, my third layer. So if you're in layer two, which is this bunny, and if I were to start wanting to draw over it for some reason. I could draw over this bunny. Let's make that bigger so you can see it. I could draw over this bunny, but then if I go over here, you'll see because of the way it's layered, I can't draw over this bunny because that's imported. Edit, undo. So basically, you have to pay attention. You can only draw on the layer that you're on, um, if that makes sense. Uh, or you can't draw on the current layer that you're, you can't draw behind that layer based on uh, how your layers are set up. So if I was like, had this over this bunny, I'd have to physically move this layer to be on top for this bunny to be on top or any other changes that I want to make. And you can do that. You can click and drag layers. You can also lock layers. You can press this eye and it'll make it so that you can't see the layer behind it. So if I wanted to press this I, now it deletes it. So if you're working with a lot of layers, it lets you only see the layer that you want visible. Uh, so that's basically how your layers work. Um, and we can either even go into effects. So if, for instance, though, if I was, well, I'll, I'll go into this at the end. Um, but let's say that I wanted to add an effect to just the background. I'd select the background. I'd go into image. You could go into adjustments, and you've got, you can change the brightness contrast, uh, exposure, saturation, invert these, um, all kinds of, of different kinds of, of ways of manipulating the image. Um, then you've also got different filters under the filter tab, so you can blur it, stylize changes, solarize, all kinds of changes um, to alter the image. So let's say, the way that, say that I wanted the background to look kind of blurred. I could go into blur, you know, and I could go into, say, a lens blur, and then it pulls up this um, edit map and if I alter this, it'll show you. So if I want the bunnies to be in focus and the background to be blurred, I could, you know, build up this radius blur and then press OK. And now that's going to be blurred while the foreground's going to be in focus. A billion options here. 
you know, I could take one of these bunnies and go to adjustments and go into threshold and make him, you know, invert the colors and make him, you know, a black bunny, for instance. Um, so that's how that tool is used. Fill is to fill in color. Again, this is just a general overview, so should have everything we need to get you guys experimenting. Um, so when I've got the image where I want it, I want it to export it, I press OK, and it's not ready to file save yet because it's just going to save all these disconnected elements as the Photoshop file. Um, you want to make this one cohesive image. So when you're absolutely ready with all the changes you've made, you'd go into image or into layer and flatten image or merge visible, which is going to merge all the layers. And now you see you only have the background image. I can't edit these bunnies anymore. It's locked, just like it's saying. It's all one background image. But if I'm happy with it, at the end when you turn it in, you'd go save, and you'd save it as a, you want your quality to be large, progressive, to make sure that it's optimal, maximum quality, press OK. Oh, man, I don't know what, what's up with my font system. But anyway, you'd save it because you'd have fonts because you're not using CS6, hopefully. But that's the basic introduction to Photoshop for everything you'll need for this assignment. Feel free to make any image that you want as crazy as you want it. It can be something practical like a flyer, uh, you know, it can be um, any kind of a crazy art image. That's completely up to you, but experiment with Photoshop. You know, really the sky's the horizon, and as always, message with any questions if you can't figure anything out. Good luck.